In this video, I'm gonna be going through what I personally think is the fastest way to make complex web applications, which is using Next.js with Firebase. We're gonna set up a small little funny project using all of the core features of Firebase with Next.js, and we'll also include how to set it up with TypeScript for those who wanna use that. I'll be running through how to set up Firebase authentication with third-party social providers like GitHub, and also how to set up a real-time Firestore database so that we can have live updates on the UI. Lastly, I'll be running through cloud functions so that we can create a user document in the database which runs on the cloud every time a user signs up. Here's a quick little preview of the project that we're going to be making throughout this video. So I've just gone ahead and signed up with GitHub and as a result, we've triggered a cloud function to write all of my personal information into this user's collection. So this is the UID of my personal GitHub profile. And as you can see, we've stored all of my user information in this user document. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and vote on the lifelong question of does pineapple belong on pizza to which the answer is yes and we'll create a vote document in the votes collection we can go ahead and see that here so this is the uid of my profile again as the name of the document and you can see here i voted yes for the answer there and we're also displaying a list of voters which is just mapping both of these collections together so we're using the uid here and the uid here to match up my user document to the votes document and if i go ahead and change my vote you can see on the ui we're reflecting that change of yes and no and just to prove that that works in the back end we'll see here it says no for my vote if i change it to yes it's yes on the back end as well so if this sounds like something that you're interested in please stick around to the end of the video as we're going to be going through all of the details on how to do that and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing and also hitting the like button as it really does help out my channel but without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is initialize the Next.js project, which we can do with npx create next app and just the name of the application. So I'm gonna do pineapple. Once that's done, we'll change directories into the newly created project and open it up in VS Code. I'm also gonna quickly set up TypeScript, but you can skip this chapter if you're not interested in TypeScript. To get started with TypeScript in Next.js, we just need to install three packages, TypeScript, Types React, and Types Node and then we'll create a tsconfig.json file at the root of our project. By running npm run dev, Next.js is kind enough to generate the configuration required to use TypeScript with Next.js, and then we can just change all of our JS files to .tsx files. To clean up the starter code a little bit, I'll just go ahead and delete the API directories and all of its contents and replace the HTML in index.tsx to just return a hello. Now I can run npm run dev again and preview our simple hello message at localhost 3000. To get started with Firebase, I'm going to install three more packages. The first one is just Firebase, which is the official Firebase package. The second one is React Firebase Hooks, which is a small library containing hooks that wrap around the core features of Firebase, such as authentication, as well as Firestore. The third package is React Firebase UI, which is just a pre-built UI for Firebase authentication, specifically for React. Now that's out of the way, let's go ahead and create a new Firebase project at the Firebase console. We'll go ahead and click add project, give it a small little name, and I'm personally not gonna enable Google Analytics for this project, but that's up to you. If you've never used the Firebase console before, this is where we'll create and configure all of the resources that we'll use throughout our project. And on the left-hand side menu, you can see a list of all the resources that are available for Firebase users. The key ones that we'll be using are authentication, Firestore database, as well as functions. To configure the project, we'll click the gear icon and navigate to project settings. We'll need to create a web app underneath this project so we'll give it a name and register the application. Here Firebase is gonna provide us a configuration script, but we'll convert these key values into environment variables so that we can use them without exposing them to our users. To do that, we need to create a .env.local file at the root of our project, and we'll just copy these config values into the environment variables like so. Now we just need to create the script to initialize Firebase for our specific project. To do that, I'll create a Firebase directory, and within that Firebase directory, create a client app.ts containing the following code. All we need to import is all of our environment variables and just say Firebase initialize app with those client credentials. Then we'll export Firebase itself and every time we want to use Firebase in another one of our files, we'll import Firebase from this specific file. Now that we've created, configured and linked Firebase to our code base, let's set up some of our Firebase features. I'll start off with setting up Firebase authentication. 
To do that, we'll go back to the Firebase console and click on authentication and then get started. For this specific project, I'm gonna be enabling GitHub authorization. If you wanna do the same, we'll need to create a GitHub application now. To do that, we'll first copy this authorization callback URL. Then we'll go to the GitHub homepage, click on our profile icon, and then hit settings, developer settings, OAuth apps, and register a new application. We'll pick a name for the GitHub OAuth application, and then use the URL we just copied from Firebase and paste it in here. Then we'll generate a new client secret and copy and paste both the client ID and the client secret into the Firebase window. Now that GitHub Auth is fully enabled, let's set that up on the front end. For now, we'll just create a simple page under the pages directory called auth.tsx. We'll use the library we installed earlier called React Firebase UI to display a pre-built login form. To do that, we'll need to import Firebase from our client app file that we just created, as well as the styled Firebase auth from the React Firebase UI library. Then we'll create a UI config variable containing the sign in success URL to send users back to the home page when they successfully sign in. Then for the sign in options variable, this is an array of providers that you want users to be able to sign in with. So you could chuck in Facebook, Google, Twitter, or any other auth provider that is available in Firebase. But just for this project, I'm only using GitHub. So we'll just use GitHub auth provider dot provider ID in this array. And then we'll just export a simple function that shows a sign in page to the user. Now, if we visit the auth route on our local host, we can sign up with GitHub and hopefully we'll be successfully signed in and then redirected back to the homepage. Although we can't really tell if the user's actually signed in right now, so let's set up a console log on the homepage to show if the user's signed in. To detect whether the user is currently signed in, we'll use the React Firebase hooks library that we installed earlier. This library has a hook called use auth state to get the current signed in user. Let's check that out now. To use that hook, we'll first need to import it and then within our home function, we'll say const user loading and error is equal to use auth state firebase auth. These are the three values we're destructuring from the hook. So the user is the value of the current signed in user, or it's undefined if there isn't one. The loading variable is a Boolean flag to say whether the value of the user is loading or not. And of course the error value is to show whether an error has occurred trying to load the current user. So just to confirm that we successfully signed in, we'll create a simple console log statement to show whether the user is loading and then the value of the current user. Now, if we revisit our value and open up the homepage using the F12 key, we can first see that the loading value is true and the current user is null. And then another console log to say the loading value is false so we've successfully loaded the current user, which is this confusing gibberish value here. We can also see this in the auth tab from the Firebase console. So there should be an entry of our account and the GitHub icon for the provider here. I'm just gonna go ahead and set up a simple UI on the homepage containing two buttons, one for the yes pineapple on pizza and one for the no pineapple on pizza. Now we're ready to go ahead and set up a Firestore database. Now, if you don't know what a Firestore database is, it's pretty much a NoSQL database hosted on the cloud that we'll be able to connect to using that client app function that we set up earlier. To enable Cloud Firestore, we'll go to the Firebase console again and click on Firestore database. Then we'll click create database and start it in test mode. Just pick any region that you like and then enable. I'll go ahead and create some dummy data just so we can connect it on the front end. So let's create a collection called votes and then a dummy document so our database looks like this. To connect our database on the front end and read the data in from the cloud, we'll use another hook from the React Firebase hooks library. This time we'll use the use collection hook, which retrieves and monitors a collection from Cloud Firestore. It also listens to live updates and stores the latest data for us in the value field. Then within the home function, we'll destructure out the values from the hook similarly as we did before. To do that, we'll say const votes, votes loading and votes error is equal to the use collection with the parameter of the votes collection from our Firestore database. Then to display all of the documents contained in that collection, we'll say votes.docs.map and then console log the data of each document from that collection. Now, if we take a look at the console again from our website, we can see all the documents contained from the votes collection. Rather than just reading dummy data though, we'll go ahead and create some functionality to create a new vote document from within our code base. To do that, we'll create an async function called addVoteDocument. This function is gonna take a parameter of vote, 
which is the yes or no vote that the user is going to pass in. Then we'll say create a new document within the votes collection with the name of the UID of the currently signed in user. Within that document, we'll set the vote value to the vote value passed in as a parameter. We'll also need to make sure that we defined the DB variable at the top of our home function to be equal to firebase.firestore. From our UI, we'll set the two buttons to call this function with yes or no values as the parameter whenever the users click the button. Now, if we test it out on the UI, we can see that we're creating the document in the votes collection and the name of that document is equal to the UID of the user that we've signed in as. As the next step, let's display a counter on the UI to display how many people have voted for the yes or no value. To do that, we'll add some basic HTML again, and then we'll say votes.docs.filter and filter out the documents from the votes value that we added earlier to only where the vote value is equal to yes or equal to no. So here's what we've got on the UI so far. And always remember, if you don't wanna write the hard-coded HTML like I'm doing in this video, you can always see the source code in the description. To take our code to the next level, I wanna see who's voting yes and no to the ultimate pineapple question. To do that, we need to store the user data somewhere, which we can do using a cloud function. This cloud function is gonna be triggered every time a user signs up, and what it's gonna do is copy all of the user's information into a new user document inside a collection of users that we're gonna create. So this way, we'll be able to access all of the user's information from the user's collection in our Firestore database. And not only that, a new document is gonna be created every time a user signs up, which is a function that's gonna be running on the cloud. To enable cloud functions, we'll need to go to the functions tab on the Firebase console. In order to create cloud functions though, we'll first need to upgrade our project to the Blaze pay-as-you-go plan. Not to worry though, unless you're getting a significant number of users, we won't actually pay a cent here since we get 2 million invocations per month for free of these cloud functions. I'd still recommend you set up a budget of whatever you're comfortable with. Once we've upgraded our project, we'll click get started. To create a cloud function, we'll first need to install the Firebase CLI by running npm install g Firebase tools and also npm install Firebase functions. Once that's installed, run Firebase login to log into the CLI with your Google account. To initialize cloud functions on the CLI, run Firebase init functions and accept the following configuration. Since we've already set up our project, I'll opt in to use an existing project and select the pineapple project that I've already created. I'm gonna select TypeScript to write the cloud functions in and not opt in to use ESLint. I'm gonna install the dependencies with NPM now so that we can get started as well. If we go back and take a look at our project, we can notice a number of files have been added by the Firebase CLI. The main file that we're interested in is the function slash index.ts or JS file if you opt to use JavaScript. This is where we're gonna write and export all of our code for our cloud functions. We can create a function that triggers whenever a Firebase user is created using the functions.auth.user on create event handler. Before we do that, we'll need to import a few things and initialize our Firebase within this cloud functions file. We'll require Firebase admin and then call admin.initialize app. The Firebase admin is a way of using Firebase on the server side, so we're actually running these cloud functions in Node.js rather than just on the web. We'll need to create our DB variable again with admin.firestore. Then we'll create a function that adds a document into the users collection whenever a user signs up. We'll need to make sure we json.pass and json.stringify the user as we're writing it into the document, otherwise it's gonna error out. The way that this works is the user value here is of type auth.userRecord, meaning we can access things like the user's email, the display name, the UID, and the photo URL. All we're doing is copying the user and writing all of that information into a document in our users collection on our Firestore database. Next, we'll run Firebase deploy dash dash only functions to deploy this function to the cloud. To test if this works, we'll go ahead and delete ourselves as a user from the authentication tab inside the Firebase console. Then we can try sign up again through the auth route from our local host. If we take a look at our Firestore database now, we'll notice that we've created ourselves as a user document in the users collection. To clean up the UI a little bit, I'm firstly gonna go ahead and delete our auth page and instead create a components directory and then add a auth component within that folder, which just returns a simple sign-in screen. Then back on the home page, we'll show the user different screens depending on what state the user is in. If the user is in a loading state, we'll just show them a simple loading screen. Once the loading is done, 
and if there is not a user, we'll show them the sign in screen. Otherwise, we'll show them what we were showing them before, which is providing them with the options to vote yes or no to the ultimate pineapple question. Now let's create another component called voter list. And this component is going to be responsible for showing which users have voted and what they voted for. This is going to use the use document hook from the React Firebase hooks library. We'll use this hook to grab the exact document of the user from the users collection using an ID value that we pass in as props to this function. We'll display the user's photo URL, their display name, as well as the vote that they've made, which is going to be passed in as props as well. To render that out on the home page, we'll map each document in the votes collection into a voter list component. As props to this voter list component, we'll pass the document.id, which is the UID of the user as the ID prop. We'll use that same value for the key, and then for the vote prop, we'll extract the vote variable out of the data of that specific document. Now if we revisit the page, we can see a list of voters that is updating in real time. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button as it really does help out my channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this in the very near future. Remember, you can always see the source code in the description below, as well as all of my other socials if you want to check them out. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it and have a great rest of your day.